This is the uh, edge of Manassas Park community and uh, Hampton is over here in the woods and uh, this is the last time he's going to get hit in the woods before he gets to D.C. It's a warmer morning, warmer yesterday. I don't even think it froze last night. Morning big baby. How you doing? This is the big day boy. We go into DC today. You ready? You want your morning green? Oh yeah, you want your morning green. Yeah. You've been such a great horse, man. This is uh the morning we push into DC. I saw is uh, got him as grain. And feed him up. It's gonna be a long ride. Beginning of the end. One of the last days of the ride for freedom. We're in Manassas Park and we're headed for DC this morning. He's a historic Blenheim, it says. 1859, something like that. We are on uh, the old Lee Highway through Fairfax, headed for Arlington. Yeah, this horse will go anywhere, man. There's the beltway. Well, on our way towards uh, Washington, D.C., we're going through this town, and uh, this is the state movie theater. Pretty cool. Very nice for a wet, sopping, cold night. This is the Marine Memorial Iwo Jima. Uncommon valor was a common virtue. And it is sometime in the evening. It's uh, 11.08 on February 22nd, 2010. In Hampton here, you can see there, and I have ridden from Salem, Oregon to L.A. to Phoenix to Dallas to Washington, D.C. The Queen of Thailand needs to give back the land of the Aka people. we come a long ways, Hampton. A really long ways. Come on, let's walk around. We got work to do. We're getting the uh, nighttime tour of Washington, D.C. because we couldn't afford the daytime tour tickets. And we're getting the wet, rainy, cold, freezing, ice on the ground tour because we couldn't afford the dry night tickets. And uh, this is a really wonderful thing, isn't it, Hampton? If you only knew where you was. Well, what do you see over there, huh? Someone walking their dog? Yeah. That, my father fought off the Pacific in the Navy, Bruce McDaniel, on a uh, missile boat. Been a long day, guy. Let's go. And over there is our first glimpse of the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. We're going to go get the bridge. Yeah, Hampton, we made it. I didn't know this statue was so big. It's huge, man. You bring your flag with you? I think you did. Here we're looking over a stone wall into Arlington Memorial Cemetery and there's row after row of white tombstones. There's the Seabees Memorial. With compassion for others we build, we fight for peace with freedom. This is the uh, 
Memorial Bridge over the Potomac River on a Potomac kind of winter night. One of the worst record setting snow years in Washington, D.C. And we've been freezing since Mississippi. This is the Potomac River Bridge to the Queen of Thailand from the great state and commonwealth of Virginia. Give back the land of the Aka people. Pretty nice, huh, Hampton? Salem, Oregon. That's come into the district. Over the bridge. Well, I'm back over the bridge. Horses are not allowed. Oh, you didn't have any sign. I'm sorry. We don't get too many horses coming over here. But I'll make a recommendation. Take your picture. And uh, is there somewhere I can find out about that? How to, uh... Sure, you can go, go, to a, go to an online cafe, get on a computer, and you find out all the information you need. So what, what part of the capital can a horse be at? You're not allowed to have a horse within the District of Columbia. Okay. All right. Welcome to America. Uh, you, there's the U.S. Capitol at the far end. So, guy gets a little bit excited. He says, "You know, uh, turn your horse around, ride it back the way you came from." can have horses in the District of Columbia. Well, we got here. You know, a guy could be home doing meth instead. But you ride across America to see your own capital, and you got some guy with his testicles in a bind. Not very polite. Badge number 251. Well, anyway. So here's a uh, Hampton. We're going to check with the uh, mounted park police in the morning about the regulations. The park police commander didn't know. He said he'd have to call them in the morning. And uh, we'll be back. Badge number 251 may not know what he's talking about. He doesn't have a regulation book in his hand. Just said, well, you look on the internet. It'll tell you you can't bring a horse into the District of Columbia. Great deal. Badge number 251. Third grade education. That's great, man. Automatically save the right Send us your mom. Yeah, you can hit like the. How can you always attract so many cops, man? We'd never make bank robbers. You already attract cops. <coughs> Outstanding. Hampton. He, he knows more cops than anybody. <laughs> Bill Hampton. So, um,. This is a recap. Um, I rode Hampton probably 30 miles from Manassas, Virginia to the Iwo Jima Memorial, walked across the 
Potomac River Memorial Bridge, went around to the front of the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, you got to get the context of this. Everywhere you got ice and mud from equipment getting off the road and getting into the lawn and mud and everything up, and you got this big mess, right? And um, there's nobody in the mall. It's 12 o'clock at night. <clears throat> and uh, I go around the front, walk Hampton. I'm not riding him. I'm walking him. I walk him around on the road, the blacktop, around the front of the Lincoln Memorial. And I can see as I'm turning the corner, like as I'm headed across the front of it, I'm coming up to the corner and headed across the front of it on a geometric angle. I can see that there's all these unemployed uh, Washington, D.C. Park Police up there guarding the big pillars, you know, so no one will take them at night. And um, there's a little guard shack there in a car, but nobody's there. They're all up, you know, standing up on the lip there by the monument. So <clears throat> I walk Hampton and I see one guy snowballing off the top of there, you know, so I you have to get straight on in and look at it or you won't see Lincoln because the in between the pillars and he's all lit up in white. It's a really beautiful view and I want to do a lot of photography that, that during the night because of the lights and there's nobody there. I mean there's nobody. You know the whole mall is snow and ice and nobody. So it's a great opportunity for me. This guy, badge number 251, he's a certifiable dickhead. He comes snowballing off of there and I mean They've got to find people that are more stupid than working in IRS, they can't work there, and they're more stupid than working in immigration, and they're more mean because they can't work there either, and for some reason. And they make them into park, the nation's capital. It's like TSA people, you know, they're often really rude, right? <clears throat> they're working in the nation's capital, and they have uh, zero etiquette and uh, zero people skills. And they're just a mouth with a badge and a gun. So he starts, I mean, I, he's in my friggin' photo, man. He starts mouthing off at me and saying, you take your horse right back the way you come. You can't have him anywhere in D.C., which isn't true, right? Furthermore, he didn't have a rule book with him. And the, the watch commander of the park police could not cite the law about not having horses there. And I'm going to follow this up because... Basically, if a cop can't cite the law of why something's illegal, he shouldn't be a cop and he shouldn't be enforcing a law he can't cite. Okay. So this guy's standing in front of my picture and I got this other rent-a-cop standing right in front of Lincoln so I can't see Lincoln with the video camera. The video camera's still running and this guy's mouthing off. <clears throat> I've been there like two and a half minutes or less. And so anyway, I can see it's a lost cause, you know. And uh, so the guy's not, I mean, the guy didn't have any finesse, like, hi, how you doing? Where'd you come from? That far away, huh? And uh, uh, how's your horse doing? Um, you know, and chit-chat and say, you know, um, I don't mean to, to, to uh, you know, we never see horses down here, and I don't mean to anything by it, but uh, uh, we got a regulation uh, under this article, blah, blah, blah. That you can't have horses here, and I know you come a long way, so I'll give you, a, you know, a couple minutes, and, and you can get what you need, but I'm going to have to ask you to move your horse out because that's the way it is, you know. Nothing, nothing like that. I mean, this guy didn't even have a clutch, you know. It was just started up and drop it into gear. That's all he had, right? So these are my great Washington, D.C. We got to Washington, D.C. troopers. So, um, so anyway, we turned the horse around. I rode back in, the, I walked back into downtown Arlington, and I found a shop that was open. A 7-Eleven uh, shop that was open. And I hung out there all night, and the Arlington police come by, and they're really great and fun. They got on the horse and took pictures. And the taxi drivers come by, and it wasn't a cafe, but people used it like a cafe, and all the taxi drivers come by, and all the people that were regulars, and they were real friendly. And I went inside, and a guy brought me a chair, and I sat down, and I had, people bought me stuff to eat. And Hampton was out in the corner, tied up there, a little, 
a little annoyed at me for restricting his diet for a night, right? Well, it was a kind of good in a way because he didn't like poop 50 times and I didn't have to get off the horse 50 times and clean it up. So people, we fed him like a bag. I went into this giant store, right? And I asked him how much the carrots were. And he said, oh, here's a couple bags and a bag of apples. Just take them, go. You know, you'll be, just take them. Help yourself. And he was like the store manager, right? He's really cool. So I take out two bags of carrots, a bag of apples, two uh, containers of rolled oats, a, a pound of brown sugar, and uh, I don't know what else we do. And people bought food out in Hampton in the parking lot of Grants, of Giants there on, uh, uh, what was that street we came in on? Washington Boulevard. Uh, they come out and feed him. We're right near downtown Arlington. And uh, so then we, we uh, hey, you guys hang on a minute, okay? Let me finish this video. So then um, we uh, wait till, I was supposed to call the park police for the horse part at 7 o'clock. So I call about 6.45 and I talk to the guy. You, you know, know, know where in the district of Columbia. I said, but you have stables in the district of Columbia where they're advertised on the internet with riding lessons. Well, and you know, can you tell me the law? Where's the law? The guy can't tell me anything, okay? So, and you can't cross this bridge, you can't cross that bridge, and you can't cross that bridge, you know. Anyway, so this bridge is closed, but it's under construction. So we, you can only cross 695. He knows it's an interstate, that you can't even get on it. And, he, and he's telling me I can cross uh, 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 695, uh, or whatever it was, uh, uh, on horseback, right? So, anyway, I call up the up this road towards uh, one of the bridges, and I ask people, is that bridge closed? And they go, no, it's open. They're just narrow, and it's congested because it's doing construction work. So I ride up this really narrow road, you know, anticipating these park police Gestapos to, to you know, stop me. <clears throat> and I get up there, and it's just a pain in the ass, let me tell you. I get on this really narrow road. I mean, it's not a problem with the cars or anything. It's just that... Police state America on everything you turn. It's like Washington D.C. It's it's such a green zone now. You know, they're so protecting America uh, that it, it, it does. It, it's a contradiction in what the place is supposed to be, and it's a contradiction in how the country's supposed to be. And um, so I get up to the bridge, and they're doing construction work on it, and the traffic's barely moving. And I get up there with Hampton. And there's these expansion grabs. So I'm trotting Hampton behind the cars. They're going about, you know, five miles an hour or something. I'm trotting Hampton behind the cars. I'm, I'm expecting, you know, someone to start blowing, you know, like sounding the national air raid siren and like uh, F-114s or something to start start coming 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 over here. Sit down. No, Paul Jordan and double dead. No, 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 so uh, I'm expecting, you know, hovercraft on the Potomac and, you know, helicopters, you know, with guys propelling down out of them with Uzis, you know, and, and uh, M60 machine guns, you know, and an armored personnel carrier with a turret on it to pop out of a disguised manhole. And <clears throat> so the cars start moving faster, and I'm seeing this, one of these scissor expansion jack, uh, cracks in the bridge, and Hampton just ain't going over it, you know, right? <clears throat> so I like do a flying dismount, grab the reins, and I start trotting Hampton. Now Hampton's really good at this, and he's a hundred percent horseman. He knows when the when the chips are down, and uh, so I take Hampton and I start trotting, and I are running. I'm running as fast as I can run across this bridge, and I run the entire length of the Potomac River Bridge, and cut left and head up this parkway that runs along the Potomac. And I get up a ways and I go up to Military Circle. But just insane, you know. And, you, and, and it was amazing because, you know, when I got on the parkway, I realized that it was about two miles of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic one way, and there was no way that any of the, the uh, park police or anybody else that would get their testicles in a bunch we're going to be able to get up to me to like, you know, hey, buddy, you got to turn around and go back. You know, well, I don't know what he told you at the com watch commander, you know. So I felt pretty funny about that because it was like, all right, I got in here and I got this done. Let's go to Walter Reed. And so that's what we did. We went to Walter Reed. 
rode up to Silver Springs in the evening, and this guy, uh, Scott, was really nice to open up his home and say, hey, you can put your horse in my backyard. And uh, that's what we did. A great family. And uh, we finally got some sleep. But uh, I could do without that kind of stress again anytime soon. And uh, uh, I think it really takes away from the, the U.S. Capitol when you have like the lowest of the of the poorly educated guarding the place. I mean, you know. <clears throat> but I asked the guy, I said, what's the deal with the park police? And everybody said the same thing, you know, like they were jackasses, you know. What's the deal with the park police? They go, they got nothing to do, you know, there's nothing exciting happening, you know. Uh, and so they're just standing around and if, uh, you know, if, uh, if a fly burps, they go over and arrest them, you know. It's just, so anyway, um, that was a long two days and we had a a pretty good time with people and Hampton was really good just a really super good horse and he and he was trotting through Silver Springs he still had his energy wound up and was ready to pump and he, he got to the Silver Springs and we fed him a ton of food and and uh, so he's got some time off now but one great horse